how to take the derivative when we have to use the product rule, quotient rule, and also the chain rule. And more importantly, I will show you guys my memory devices when we have to differentiate with these rules. And if you are studying calculus for the first time, maybe you will find the memory devices helpful because it will help you to remember how to construct the derivatives. So let's start with the product rule. Here we are going to differentiate x to the third power times sine x. Of course, you can just follow the formula f times g prime plus g times f prime. But let me show you something that's more official. And as I said, this is my memory device. All right, so right here, you see this is x to the third power times sine x. I will label this to be f and I will label this to be g. And I will write this down for you guys to be more specific. f is x to the third power and g is sine x. And then from here, I will just differentiate them individually. f prime, we get 3x squared, and then g prime, we get, what's the derivative of sine x? Hmm. This is something that you have to remember, okay? So the derivative of sine x is cosine x, okay? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, now we have the ingredients, and let me show you guys how to do the cooking. Right here, we will be able to construct our derivative by doing the following. You take this times that, namely x to the third power times cosine x. So let's put that down. x to the third power times cosine x. And then you have to remember you associate product with sum. And you are going to add, okay? This times that then, the other direction. I have sine x. And let me put parentheses like this, and then we multiply by 3x squared, okay? And that's pretty much it, okay? And as I said, you can remember the formula, and in fact, you should be able to look at this and then put down this for the answer once you practice this a lot, and that's the expectation. But once again, if you are doing derivatives for the very first time, maybe my memory devices will help, so give them a try. Anyway, in the end, we pretty much just write this in the front, so we can write this down as x to the third power cosine x plus 3x squared times sine x. And the usual deal is, if you only have x inside of the sine or cosine, you don't have to put down the parentheses. So this right here is it for the first one. And now, let me show you guys my memory device for the quotient rule. On the top, I will label this to be f. On the bottom, I will label that to be g. But you have to remember, quotient is the opposite of product. So in this situation, I will have to write down g first, which is 1 plus cosine x. And then on the side, we put down f, which is sine x. Write them down so that you can just differentiate them individually. So right here, g prime, the derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And once again, this is something that you have to remember. And right here, differentiate sine x, we get cosine x. And now, these are the ingredients. I will show you guys how to do the cooking. Well, in this situation, remember, if you start off with a fraction, you are going to end up with a fraction, most likely. So go ahead and draw that fraction bar. And before you do anything, go ahead and square the denominator. Put this down, 1 plus cosine x, and then you are going to square the denominator, like that. And then for the top, this is where we are going to use this memory device. I will go this times that, okay? Still pretty much the same thing. Well, this right here has two terms, so be sure you put down parentheses and then you multiply this and that, and that goes right here. So that's 1 plus cosine x, and then times this cosine x. And remember, earlier I told you, you associate product with sum, right? This time, you are going to associate, let me just make it better. This time, you are going to associate quotient with subtraction. So you are going to subtract this times that then, okay? So we have this sine x, and then I'm going to multiply by this negative 
sine x like that. OK, from here, this is pretty much it. The rest is just you do the identities, you just combine terms forever, OK? So we will see you can distribute this, of course. On the top here, we have cosine x times 1, that's cosine x. Cosine x times cosine x, that's plus cosine squared x. And then this times this, negative times negative, becomes plus sine x times sine x, that's sine squared x. And then on the denominator, we have 1 plus cosine x squared, like that. OK, that's pretty much it. But we notice this right here, cosine squared x plus sine x, is famously equal to 1, isn't it? So I can rewrite that, and perhaps let me put that down first. 1 plus cosine x over this, 1 plus cosine x squared. And now you see the purpose of me putting down the 1 right here first. It's because this and that are the same thing. We can cancel one of them out. So let me put on parentheses to be legitimate. I can cancel the top with one of the factors on the bottom. So in the end, we get what? Just a 1, and this is a nice 1 over that, namely 1 plus cosine x to the first power. So this is all you have to put down, and this right here is it, right? And lastly, here's the chain rule. And of course, I will have my memory device for you guys right here as well. But before we do anything, you have to know this notation as follows. This right here is asking you to differentiate. When you have secant to the third power, it's the same thing as saying, you put a parenthesis with secant x inside, and then raised to the third power. When you have powers with trig functions, be sure you use parentheses accordingly. When you have the third power right here, this means you, can, you take secant x, multiply it three times. So that's what we have. And now, here is the deal. You are going to look at this expression, and then you are going to pick up the outer function first. The outer function is, just look at the big picture. You have this to the third power, and that's going to be f. And I will label f first. But in this case, I'm not going to put down any x for f. But instead, I'll put down box, right? So we have a box to the third power like this. And then the g function is what's inside of the box. Of course, we will have the secant x in the box. So this right here is what we have. And now, just like what we have been doing, once we put them down, we can differentiate them individually. For the first one, f prime. This is a box to the third power. So what do we do? Well, bring the power to the front and then minus 1, the good old power rule, right? So we get 3, but remember, we have a box. So you open the box and then raise that to the second power. Anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much it, seriously. And then look at the g function, and once again, the derivative of secant x, we see that this is secant x times tangent x. And be sure you remember your derivatives, OK? And now this is how you construct your answer for the derivative of secant to a third power. Well, this time, you are going to look at the g function, which is secant x, and then you are going to put this into the box, OK? And perhaps now, let me just erase my circle, because that was just the power rule to show you the derivative of x to the, the box to the third power is that. But you put this in the box, OK? This is how you construct the chain rule situation. So we have 3. But instead of the box, when you write down the answer, please put down parentheses, OK? So put down parentheses, and then you have the secant x inside. And then this is raised to the second power. And then you are going to multiply by this. So just put it down. You multiply by secant x tangent x like this. So this right here is it. But notice we have secant x to a second power times secant to the first power, right? So altogether, you can add the exponents. So you get third power. So this right here is 3. And then together, here we will have secant to the third power x. And then in the end, we finish it with tangent x.
So this right here is for the chain rule question. However, before we finish this video, I would also like to talk about if you have the following question instead. Notice today, if you are trying to differentiate secant with x to a third power like this inside, you see, here we have x to a third power inside of the secant. This is very different than that. This means you have x times x times x inside of the secant function. Anyway, so for this, I will also show you guys with the memory device real quick. Right here, the outer function is actually secant of a box. And then the inside function is g, which is x to the third power. And you go ahead and differentiate this, the derivative of secant of a box. You get secant box, tangent box. So this is secant box, tangent box. And then the derivative of x to the third power is 3x squared. And now, if this was the question, you go ahead, bring the x to the third power, put it into these two boxes. Let's write this down. Here we have secant, and then open the parentheses with x to the third power inside. And then tangent of x to the third power inside, right, put this in the box. In the end though, you multiply by 3x squared, like that. And of course, usually we write down the 3x squared first, so let's go ahead and put this down. 3x squared times secant of x to the third power times tangent of x to the third power. 